Welcome to Pop Talk. I'm your host, Luke Fry. This first episode is going to get you up to speed with everything you need to know about the Academy Awards 2018. From Meryl Streep to Timothy Chalamet. By the way, if you don't know who that is, that's completely okay. Timothy Chalamet, not Meryl Streep, though, because we may have a little bit more work to do that I can't cover in this episode. But I'm going to get you as up to speed as I can. So every year I watch the Academy Awards, and I'm like, I wish I knew a little bit more about this film, or I wish, you know, I had seen a mashup of all of the films. Well, here you are. I did it for you, and I did it for me. Also, if you're looking for that one last Oscar film to catch right before awards night... Uh, there's too many to choose from. You don't know what's going on. You don't know which one you're going to pick. Hopefully this one helps you figure out which one will be right for you and which one you'll enjoy a little bit more. So today we're going to specifically be looking at the nominees for Best Picture, which this year consists of categories like comedy drama, romantic horror, which may be a little confusing since they're like compound categories and they're completely opposite. But again, I'm going to help you out and make things a little bit easier to understand. Uh, if you're like most people, you never have time to see all nine films. I don't have time to see all nine films, so don't feel bad at all. Hopefully this year I can give you a little bit more than sheer luck on your personal Oscar predictions. So let's start with one of the films I was able to see this year, which was Get Out. Following the story of a young couple who have hit the meet the parents stage in their relationship, Rose, played by Allison Williams, daughter of news anchor Brian Williams, brings boyfriend Chris to her homestead for a not-so-warm-and-fuzzy meet the parents weekend. But as the weekend unfolds, a series of disturbing events leads Chris to the truth about her family. Daniel Coolia, who plays Chris, is actually also nominated for Best Actor in this romantic thriller. And this film is actually written by Jordan Peele. Uh, yeah, he's actually the comedian from Key and Peele. Um, he's also known for a lot of his comedy. So a lot of people didn't think that he would, you know, produce or make a film so, you know, graphic and so, you know, horror-based. Um, so a lot of people were surprised it was a nominee this year. Um, it was also for me, uh, Get Out was kind of like the skeleton key uh, with Kate Hudson. It came out in about 2005. So if you like horror movies, which I'm calling this a horror film or a psychological thriller, this would be a really great one to catch um, prior to awards night. And again, a lot of people really didn't think this would end up being an Oscar film this year. But after seeing it, I must say it was actually very good. So congrats for making the list. Get out. So to our next film is The Darkest Hour, starring Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill. This World War II film follows the unstoppable Nazi forces rolling through Europe. Combined with his own party plotting against him, Churchill endures his darkest hour and attempts to change the course of world history. So I've been a huge Gary Oldman fan uh, ever since the recent Batman series where he played uh, Commissioner Gordon alongside Christian Bale. Um, you might recognize him from those films as well. Uh, Gary Oldman actually looks eerily nothing like himself in this film. He actually looks a lot like Winston Churchill. Ironically, that's who he's playing. With that being said, Gary Oldman is nominated for Best Actor and the film is nominated for Best Makeup and Hairstyling as well. So um, this movie is for the history buffs. If you love history, government, World War II interests you, this would be the film to see. I'm also going to make an Oscar prediction that The Darkest Hour will win for best hair styling and makeup. So write that down if you're keeping track of my guesses. Um, so the next film we're going to be talking about is Phantom Thread. Now, unfortunately, this movie is on my skip list. Ooh, so what does that mean? I'm sure it's a great film. Uh, it stars Daniel Day-Lewis playing British dressmaker Reynolds Woodstock and his cursed love story set in England during the 1950s. Daniel Day-Lewis is also nominated for Best Actor in a Leading Role for this film, but unfortunately, you know, out of all of the Oscar films this year, this one has gotten the least buzz. I really haven't heard a lot about it. I didn't really see any news articles about it, and it has not taken home any major awards yet from the entire award season. So, uh, however, if you're into fashion, you love a good dark love story, which, you know, don't some of us always love a good dark love story? Um, it does look good. Um, there's just so many films this year out there that look a little bit better. You can always see this after the Oscars are over. Um, and see a more important one first. So that's why it's on my skip list. 
I just like to let you know that ahead of time. The next film is The Post. This film follows the first Washington Post female publisher, Catherine Graham, and standing editor Ben Bradley racing to expose a massive government cover-up which spans three decades and four U.S. presidents. With Meryl Streep playing Catherine Graham and Ben Bradley being played by Tom Hanks, this is a no-brainer Oscar film. This movie also stars Sarah Paulson from American Horror Story. She's also a great actress. I love her. I love every role she's ever taken on, so she's got to be great in The Post. Um, if you like dramatic films about history, maybe journalism, uh, or even if you just are a huge Meryl Streep fan and you see every single film she's ever done, this movie is perfect for you to go see. Is this even a question? Yes, Meryl is nominated for Best Actress in a Leading Role for this film, as she always is. Um, if you like the film Spotlight from 2015 with Michael Keaton and Rachel McAdams, I believe, um, I would compare this to a not-so-modern version of that film. The Post takes place in about 1970s versus Spotlight, which took place in 2001. Um, the post also seems like it's going to be a little bit more dramatic as well. Um, so you can't really go wrong with that. And Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, come on. It's going to be a great film. All right, so this next one is a doozy. You know, I'm... I'm gonna try my best. So this is that Oscar film. There's one every year that you just really can't quite put your finger on. I feel like it's kind of like you're, you're watching it, you aren't quite sure what's happening, why these things are happening. Um, but Eliza is a mute and isolated woman who works as a cleaning lady in a high security government lab in Baltimore 1960s. Eliza uncovers a classified secret which, per the trailer, looks like some sort of swamp monster person being kept in captivity. Long story short, I'm pretty sure she falls in love with it and the story goes from there. I got some major Grand Budapest Hotel vibes from this trailer. I don't know, it just seems all over the place. If you remember the Grand Budapest Hotel, it was also all over the place. But it looks somewhat enjoyable. The storyline looks like it is pretty solid. A warning. It takes a very dark turn. It looks like things get really intense at the end, so just fair warning if you're like going to see some sci-fi thing, it is going to take a dark turn. Um, speaking about dark turns, I feel like all Oscar movies seem to have them. No Oscar movie is ever a 100% feel-good film, um, so if you just like think back to a couple major Oscar films, Black Swan, hello, the darkest of the dark, darkest film as they come is Dark Swan. Um, but anyway, if you like sci-fi things, um, a strange water monster person interests you, then I feel like The Shape of Water is all yours. Um, not saying it looks bad, I'm just saying you really need to have an open mind whenever it comes to this film. Uh, Sally Hawkins, who plays Eliza, is nominated for Best Actress. Octavia Spencer's also in the film. I like her a lot. Um, seems like it has potential, but is a little off course for my cinematic taste for 2018, which apparently is high class taste. Um, all right, so the next film is Dunkirk. This film depicts the attempted evacuations of some 400,000 troops on the war-torn beaches of Dunkirk, France during World War II. This film is seen throughout the eyes of soldiers during this hostile evacuation who are either waiting for the miracle of rescue or death. I'm told this tells a non-linear story, which I'm assuming means that it follows a bunch of different troops, um, a bunch of different storylines of troops or soldiers. Um, I'm not a huge war movie fan, but um, if this is something that interests you, I would say go right ahead and go see it. It looks really good. Um, British and American pop star, fun fact, Harry Styles is an actor in this film. So, however, if you're a fan of war films, I feel like Harry Styles is not the driving force between why you want to see this film, but who knows. Um, I originally thought Harry Styles actually didn't have a huge role in the film. I was wrong. Uh, and according to an article in The Sun, Harry actually has more lines than some of the main cast members do, and he does a great job. So, critics give the pop star an A+, for his acting debut in an Oscar film. This one, again, unfortunately, is on my skip list. Hey! 
Um, Christopher Nolan directed this film. He does a great job. He directed the latest franchise of the Batman films, which I keep talking about. Um, however, none of the main characters are nominated for any major awards this year, so I would maybe check out a film that has some actors in it who are nominated for Best Actor or Best Actress. Again, my skip list is just if you're trying to see that one last film right before award night, not saying they're bad films. Um, clearly, they're nominated for Academy Awards, so um, they're clearly great films. All right, six down, three to go. We're almost there. These last three are the most buzzed about. So they are the most buzzed about films this year for award season. And the first one of the last three is Lady Bird. This movie is set in Sacramento, California, following an outspoken teen with her strong-willed mother during her senior year of high school. Now, it doesn't sound like much, right? But do you remember your senior year of high school? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. This film looks really good. It's written and directed by Greta Gerwig and stars Saoirse Ronan, which you may recognize from 2009's The Lovely Bones. She's the cute little girl that dies and is buried. But um, she's only 23, the actress. Uh, there's a lot more to come from her. She's gone to the Academy Awards previously. She's a great, talented actress. Um, she hosted SNL this year, and it was hilarious. Um, I'm so happy for her. So um, best of luck. She's also nominated for Best Actress in the leading role for this film. And I'm comparing this film to the film Boyhood, um, it's sort of a coming-of-age story. Um, you're following the main character through one of the most changing times in her life. She's applying to colleges. She's arguing with her mother constantly. She wants out. She wants a new place. She wants a new discovery, a new opportunity. So I have not seen the film, but it looks really good. I highly recommend. It's one of my featured three. Um, now, Lady Bird is not only about the ladies, though. Um, there are two male actors who are not shy to the Academy Awards who are in the film as well. Um, I was not aware until I was kind of doing some research um, this year about how many duplicate actors there are in just the nominees for Best Picture alone. I feel like no other year there has been this handful of actors that you're seeing in at least two films playing pretty prominent roles too, which are both in the category for best picture. It's just, it's kind of blowing my mind and they're all young actors as well. So the first and most important that you should have your eyes on is Timothy Chalamet, who's 22. He's on the cover of GQ magazine, as you can see. Um, he plays the role of Kyle in Lady Bird. You may know him from starring in the series Homeland. Uh, now he's a straight up A-list movie star, hello. Um, and if you didn't know, he's also the star of Call Me By Your Name, which we're gonna talk about in just a moment. Uh, the second actor that, you're, that you will see in a few Oscar films this year is Lucas Hedges. He was actually nominated last year for Best Supporting Actor for his role in Manchester by the Sea. He played uh, Casey Affleck's nephew in the film. Lucas stars in Lady Bird this year and also Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is our next film we're gonna talk about. But uh, Lucas just turned 21, so thank the Lord he's gonna be able to legally drink at an Oscar party this year. Could you imagine being nominated for an Academy Award and then not being able to drink at the Vanity Fair party? I know, me either. I can't imagine being nominated for an Academy Award, let alone going to the Vanity Fair party. Um, all right, so next to last great film is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. One of the main picks this year for all of the awards, it swept at the BAFTAs, it swept at the Golden Globes. Um, it already took home the Golden Globe Award for Best Picture and it is three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. In an effort to track down her daughter's rapist and murderer, Mildred Hayes purchases three billboard ads outside town that targets the police chief in charge of her daughter's murder investigation. The billboards not only stir up trouble, but a full-on war between Mildred and the Ebbing Police Department. This movie is classified as a comedy drama, which if you think about a comedy and drama are two completely different things, um, but it's actually a great explanation for this film. It does have its quirks to it. I saw it a week ago. Um, it has some quirks to it. However, it is very dramatic as well, so a lot happens. Um, Frances McDormand plays Mildred Hates, the main character, 
who portrays her character very well. If you watch the Golden Globes, you actually saw her like swatting away at cameras throughout the award show. Um, she's not really into the glitz and glam of Hollywood and all of that, but uh, she was a perfect fit for this role. So I think I'm gonna guess she's gonna take home Best Actress. I think I wanna throw that out there. I think I'm going to. So Woody Harrelson also stars in the film. I like him from Zombieland. Um, again, it's a great quirky film if you haven't seen it. Um, and our third actor who we're seeing in a lot of these films is Caleb Landry Jones. He's 28. Uh, he is our third actor who appears in more than one film. He played Red Welby in Three Billboards, ironically, and he's also a main character in the first film we talked about, which was Get Out. He played Allison Williams' crazy brother. He's crazy and dark. Um, the whole time I was watching Three Billboards, I was like, where have I seen this kid? And why am I scared of him a little bit? Um, so that's why. He was also in Get Out. There are a lot of events happening in and out, um, a lot of dramatic scenes. Uh, it's kind of a film, I would say, that you have to sleep on. It's that film that so much happens almost that... Um, you have to kind of take a night, sleep on it, see how you feel about it. You know, um, whoever I saw it with asked me right away, like, hey, hey, how'd you like it? And I'm like, I think I need a night to just sleep on everything that just occurred on the screen because it's kind of a lot sometimes. All right, so the last film, guys, is my top pick, and it is called Call Me By Your Name. It is last but certainly not least, one of my favorite movies from this year. It takes place in the summer of 1983. 17-year-old Elio spends the days with his family at their home in northern Italy. He soon meets Oliver, who's a doctoral student interning for his father, and they both find the beauty of desire over the course of the summer that will alter their lives forever. This film is about as poetic as that little recap was. You're welcome. Okay, maybe it's a little bit more poetic than that recap was. Um, but this film is my favorite of the year. It's not a fast-moving film at all. So, you know, don't go expecting all of these events to be happening. But I feel like a really great Oscar film isn't a fast-moving film. It's really about, you know, the story, the actors, the surroundings, the scenery, and the relationships between the characters. Um, throughout this film, Elio, you know, is showing Oliver all around his summer home in Italy, the beautiful landscapes, the European lifestyle. It's just, it's all so freeing. And it's an overall beautiful coming of age love story that very much tugs on the heartstrings, regardless who you are. This movie kind of took me back to a personal spot after I graduated high school. I took a trip to France. I was over there for a couple weeks. And I feel like this movie really, you know, there's there's no feeling in the world like, you know, strolling down a cobblestone street, like in the south of France, um, in the middle of the summer, you just, you feel so free. And I feel like this movie really captured that feeling. And um, I believe great cinema is great art. And great art is meant to evoke feeling and make you feel things and take you to a bunch of, you know, random places or, you know, take you back to experiences you've had in your life. And this film really did that for me. Um, absolutely stunning, beautiful A-plus rating from me, which is saying a lot. Um, Timothy Chalamet plays Elio and Army Hammer plays Oliver, who are the two main characters. So some critiques about the film. Since I can't really just talk about all the great things, um, there are some critiques of the film. The one would be that a lot of people couldn't really play along with Army Hammer playing a character as young as he did. Um, I think it was completely fine. Army Hammer was hands down the look of the person they needed in that role, um, but they probably could have found an actor in Hollywood that was a little younger to play his role. Not a huge critique, I don't think, on my part. Um, if you're looking to see a film that is emotional, but in a non-dramatic way, there's not a lot of dramatics in this film. It's very calm. Um, I really love all of the relationships between the characters, not only Elio and Oliver, but you know, Elio and his dad, Elio and his friends. Um, I also really enjoy reading people. So to me, it's kind of fun to try to, you know, read people's personalities or how they feel about other people or certain situations. Um, so the whole time I was watching this, I was kind of doing that for all the characters and it was so enjoyable to me. Um, ugh, so much fun, such a great film. 
Such a great film. General wrap-up, this year's 90th Academy Awards, which airs Sunday, March 4th, is at 8 p.m., and it is hosted by Jimmy Kimmel, great late-night host. Um, they are starting earlier this year. So usually it started at 8.30 or 9 o'clock. This year it's coming on at 8. So maybe they'll be over before 5 a.m. this year. Who knows? Probably not. Um, they always run over, which makes no sense to me if you, if you think about it for just a moment these are the best of the best in entertainment yet they can't time out an awards broadcast that won't run at least an hour over i don't know it just it always baffled my minds that it's the best award show of the year and it will run until six o'clock in the morning um but make sure you're on your couch with you know the popcorn and the wine and everything you know at nine o'clock actually at eight o'clock see I haven't even switched over yet. At 8 o'clock, not like 9, like other years. So I just want to make sure you're all ready. You got the mask. You got the eye strips on. You're just ready to watch the Academy Awards. Um, I don't know about you, but I treat Academy Awards Day like I'm going to the event. Um, I'll have people ask me, hey, do you want to go to lunch? And I'm like, I don't know. The Academy Awards are tonight. So I can't have any carbs, but like I'll, I'll, I'll go. Like I'll eat a salad, you know, maybe a couple peanuts. Um... So yeah, Academy Awards Day is a huge day for me. So just keep that in mind. I'm sure there's other people out there like me. I can't be the only person that acts like that. Um, but I will be live tweeting during the Academy Awards uh, this year on my personal Twitter account. It is at Luke underscore Fry. But you can also follow Pop Talk with Luke Fry at Pop Talk LF on Twitter. Again, I'm going to be live tweeting the whole thing. Um, a lot's going to be happening. I really enjoy the Academy Awards so much. Um, I'm sure a lot's going to be said. A lot has been happening in Hollywood lately with the Me Too movement and Time's Up. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great messages this year. Um, and I'm sure they'll be conveyed very well um, during any of the acceptance speeches and any of that. So I hope this caught you up. Um, I hope you have a great time watching the Academy Awards. I know I will. Follow my personal Twitter account at Luke underscore Fry. I'm going to be live tweeting the whole thing, complete with GIFs and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll see you next time right here on Pop Talk with Luke Fry.